Hello friends. Time to stamp. Thank you for joining me. Maybe you're watching live, maybe you're watching the replay. It's all good. Um, I'm just pulling up my screen here. Okay. All right. So today, well, first of all, I'm Nicole Steele and I'm the owner and designer of the Joyful Stamper and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator and every Thursday at 11 a.m. I go live right here on my page and today I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, today we're going to make this fun little card. So I went and stamped with some friends a couple months or a month ago and we each designed a project and one of the women there had us make this card. And I loved cards that tie clothes, okay, first of all. But then when you open it, hi, Bonnie. When you open it, isn't that fun? It's a little gift bag. And it pops up. You could put a gift card in there. You could put tissue paper in there. You could put money in there, a check. Um, I mean, whatever you want, really. But I thought that was so cute. So I'm not going to make this exact one today because I actually don't have, this is Brightly Gleaming Designer Series paper, and then this is the die and the stamp set that coordinates with this paper, and it's in, I believe, um, the Holiday Mini Catalog. However, I needed two thank you cards, and I wanted to put gift cards in them, so the ones I make today are going to be gift cards, but it's the same idea. You can adapt it for Christmas just like this one is here. So let's get started making it. Oh, and before we get started, um, I need to tell you that this Tuesday, I just found this out this morning, this Tuesday, there's going to be a sale and it's only going to be for this Tuesday for 24 hours and Stampin' Up! is discounting almost everything in the annual catalog um, for, I think it's 10% off. So um, just to give you a heads up about that, I know it's getting close to Thanksgiving and it's getting a little busy, so... Things can get easily forgotten, that's for sure. I'm already getting into Christmas card shopping mode. Okay, so the card that I'm making, I'm starting off with Calypso Coral. And it's just a regular card. So it's five and a half by eight and a half inches. And you score and fold it in the middle at four and a quarter. So that's the same. Then the next part I'm going to do, because I want to layer the front before I make the middle. Um, the reason I'm going to decorate the front of the card first is because that little pop-up bag in the middle does add a little bit of bulk to it, which, and it's just easier to glue everything on when there's nothing inside the card. So that's why I'm going to start with that. I need to pull out some scratch paper here because I'm going to color my ribbon. I didn't want it to be white. So what I'm going to do is take, I wanted it to be soft sea foam. So I'm taking a dark soft sea foam stamp and blends and I'm going to use the brush tip and I'm going to color my ribbon here let's see which way do I want to start I want to start at the beginning and I'm just gonna pull it so I'm putting the brush tip on there now because this is an alcohol ink marker the ink just flows right out of it and it will bleed through the back so that's why I have some scratch paper down here and I'm just pulling the ribbon along as underneath the uh, the marker here. And you can do this with any color of stamp and blends. It will work. And you can do it with white ribbon. You can do it with um, very vanilla ribbon. And I did notice that after I I do this quite a bit actually coloring my ribbons. The Stampin' Blends, there's something about the ink in here and the probably the rubbing alcohol that makes the ribbon a little bit, um, it's not, it's less pliable. It's still easy to tie, but you'll feel the difference after you do something like this. But it's such a great look. I'll tell you another ribbon that this works great with is in the annual catalog, there is metallic edged ribbon in both silver and gold. And this technique is stunning with those. I made a card, I think a couple months ago, and I had the gold metallic edge ribbon. 
and I colored it a deep cherry cobbler, the dark cherry cobbler I think it was, because it was for a Christmas card. And the combination of that gold metallic edge and the cherry cobbler color was just, oh my gosh, it was so stunning. I loved it. Okay, so I'm just adding a little bit more here. Okay, so I've got that done. Whoops, my notes are falling over. All right, now I'm gonna attach this ribbon to the um, card base and I'm wrapping it around. So I'm gonna drape it around the front of this and I wanna make sure it's even. And I'm only gonna put some glue right there on the front. I want the box, the back of it to be loose. And I will attach it with some stamp and seal. And just lay that right across there like that. Okay, so I'm only putting adhesive on the front of the card there. And now I can glue on the other elements. And those would be this is a five inch by four, oh sorry, a five and a quarter inch by four inch piece of soft seafoam cardstock. And I ran it through my embossing machine with the Tasteful Textiles embossing folder because I just wanted some subtle texture to this. Actually, the reason I originally used this is because I pulled out scraps. I have a little scrap bucket I keep on my desk. And it's just little bits and bobs of things that I thought I was going to use on a project and I end up not doing it. So it's just this thing right here. It has all kinds of little pieces in it. Well, I was making a card and I thought, I'm going to look through and see what I've got. And I had a piece of this embossed and so I put it on my original project and I liked it. So keeping it. Okay, now I have this piece of designer series paper. This is Gilded Autumn. And this is three and three quarters by five and a quarter inch and that is going to get glued on top of this piece. I like this, uh, this pattern on the back, but I haven't used it yet on a card, and I, I just don't know how to make it work. I don't know why, and I just, I like the other patterns so, so much better. Like this gold outline of, of these pumpkins is so pretty, and also what this makes me, what this reminds me of is bleach coloring. I don't know if you guys have ever tried that technique, but you can dip a paintbrush in bleach and it will remove some of the color on your cardstock. And the look of these pumpkins kind of reminds me of that, of like taking a paintbrush, putting a little bit of bleach on it and, and painting with it. So I like that faded look. Pretty fun. Okay, now I'm going to die cut um, a label. And the label I'm going to use is from the Ornate Frames label set and I need to stamp my greeting first. And I'm going to use Cajun Craze ink now. True confession, I'm using a retired stamp set. I don't get rid of a lot of my retired stamp sets. Some of them I do. Um, but you can tell this one, this one's from 2000. I just love it. I love these skeleton leaves and I'm gonna use this thanks. So forgive me, I make what I make. I'm just a girl that loves stamps, ink, and paper irrespective of the year they're from and I know a lot of you out there you have Stampin' Up sets that aren't in catalogs anymore and you love them too and you use them so it's all good so I am now going to die cut this find my plates things get a little messy around here and this I forgot to say is soft foam cardstock and I just love this combination of soft sea foam and Cajun craze okay and I'm gonna leave a little bit of room at the bottom there because I'm gonna add some embellishments to it when I'm done and you know what I have my handle on the wrong side I'm not making this easy for myself am I let's try this again some trouble this morning. <laughs> do you ever have days like that where your fingers and your hands just don't want to cooperate with what you're trying to tell them to do? Here we go. I'm going to blame it on getting up at four o'clock in the morning. We, Emma came home yesterday and we didn't have a bed for her. Because <laughs> so, we 
we remodeled the bedroom that she shares with her sister and so we got a phone call that the box spring for her bed came in and so we had to hurry up and run up and get it meanwhile she's on her way home as we're going up to get it and so she came home and long story short we didn't end up eating until nine o'clock at night which is usually when I'm about ready to go to bed so I didn't sleep good all right, so what I did, and I'm gonna do this another time too, is I took some brushed metallic cardstock, and this is found in the annual, or sorry, in the holiday mini catalog. And I think it's rose gold, gold, or no, sorry, bronze, gold, and copper. And I believe I'm using gold. And I'm gonna take a Versamark ink pad, and I'm gonna take this long, skinny skeleton leaf, put some of that Versamark on there. And I'm going to stamp it right on this piece of brushed metallic cardstock. And I'm pushing it down quite firmly because I this is not a porous surface. I want to make sure a lot of that Versamark ink all transfer, transfers. And now I'm going to sprinkle clear embossing powder on top of this metallic cardstock. Now, one thing I learned is not to hold the heat gun too long and too close to this paper because what happens is the paper kind of warps and buckles on the back there. Can you see that? Almost like it's melting. <laughs> so <laughs> that wasn't the look I was going for, but you can't see it from the front, so it's all good. Okay, so now I'm gonna heat emboss this and melt this powder. So you wanna give your gun time to warm up here. And I'm holding it far enough away. Don't want to concentrate too long on one spot. Okay, that looks good. I don't know, sometimes it's hard to see stuff like that, but in person, you can definitely tell that something was stamped here. And now I'm just gonna trim around it. If you have a stamp set that you're using that has die cuts, sorry, I think I'm out of camera here, um, go ahead and use it. Some people like die cutting and cannot stand hand trimming. I get it. Some shapes though are so easy to cut out by hand that I just don't bother investing in dies. And this, like I said, this set's from 2000, so um, there weren't dies back then. Can you believe that? It seems so strange that we ever had stamping without die cutting. I don't know, but if I go back and look at the older Stampin' Up! catalogs, I'm like, whoa, so that's how you make a card without die cutting. Crazy, because it seems like it's always been here. And I don't know, you know how sometimes you get to where like, I don't, I don't know how I could live without that, but you know you did at one point. You did. And you could do it again, but you don't remember how to. I know people say that about cell phones, right? So now I'm going to glue these leaves down onto the front here. So I'm making this thank you card for one of the fitness instructors at my YMCA. I go there to her classes like 5.30 in the morning and I have been for years, at least a decade. Um, and she's so dedicated, she's so good. And I know she's having a really, really hard time with all the restrictions that are in place right now. Especially since yesterday, we just all found out that we now have to wear masks while working out. Yay, right? And I can tell she's not happy about it and she's really worried that people will stop coming to the classes, you know? And then she has nobody to teach and that affects her job. And But I just I want to make this for her and I want to surprise her with a gift to let her know that I really appreciate her classes. I appreciate her dedication. And yeah, working out in a mask stinks and I think it's completely unnecessary and ridiculous. But that's not on her. So I just want her to know not to worry. Not to worry. God's got it and it's all under control. Okay, I'm going to add some gilded gems. I'm down to my last 
four of these. And once we're done with the front of this card, we will make that cute, cute gift bag on the inside. Okay, I have one little gem left. That's it, and these are gilded gems. They're in the annual catalog. And I'm going to take some of this, um, this is terracotta tile ribbon. It's part of a ribbon combo pack uh, from the Ornate Garden Suite. There's a spool of old olive and a spool of terracotta tile. And I think the terracotta tile looks pretty darn close to this Cajun Craze and, and Calypso Coral. And it just, it just works. So I'm using it. And trim this up. Stampin' Up! should never have gotten rid. Oh, look at that. I'm almost done with this. Do you find it highly satisfying to use up something in your craft stash? I do. I don't know why. It's such a strange little peculiarity of me. Okay, I want to put this on with a mini glue dot. I don't know, maybe it gets me excited and happy because it means like, yay, there's an empty spot on my ribbon shelf. And now I can buy another new spool of ribbon. And I saw the January through June um, Occasions mini catalog that's going to be available to everybody on January 4th, I think it is. And I need a lot of space on my ribbon shelf because <laughs> so, there are some really cute things in there. Super, super cute. Okay, so this is a piece of five and a quarter inch by four inch um, soft sea foam. And I'm going to take one of these stamps here and I'm just going to stamp along the bottom in soft seafoam ink. It took me the longest time to buy the soft seafoam ink pad because I kept thinking, it's so light. You're not going to be able to see it. What's the point? But then I bought it and voila, it's so pretty. And we need, if you're going to put anything on the inside of your card, you need to do it before you make and attach the little gift bag. And you'll see why when we do this. Okay, make some room here. Because we're going to set this aside. And what we need now, this is the gift bag part. I need to recheck myself here. Okay. This is a, let me look at my notes here, a three inch by 11 inch piece of designer series paper. And again, it is Gilded Autumn that I'm using. Now what I like to do when I try a new project is I make myself a template. So this is the template for what our gift bag is going to be. And this is especially important if your designer series paper has a directional pattern, which mine most definitely does. You want to make sure that you're cutting it so that it's like this. Okay, so this is going, you're, this is the three inches, this is the 11 inches, and when you lay it out like this, the pattern should be facing you in the right direction. So be mindful of that whenever you're cutting your paper, and we are going to go ahead now and we're gonna score it. And I'll be referring to this template again to show you where I'm going to be making some cut marks to, to fold it up. So I'm pulling out my scoreboard here and I'm going to put my paper here so that the 11 inches is along the top there and we are going to score at one half of an inch and we're going to score at one inch and five inches, five and a half inches, six inches, 10 inches, and 10 and a half inches. And I will put these measurements in the description to this Facebook Live video so that you don't have to try to write them down. Those are a lot of numbers to remember. Okay, I'll bring my template back up here so that you can see where I'm going to be cutting. So I'm going to cut, oh, you know what? We need one more score line, sorry. I just realized that. So this is how I was scoring before. Now what I'm going to do is turn my paper and again, you have to pay attention to the direction. This is going to be the bottom of your gift bag. So you want to make sure that when you score the half inch line, it's going to be on the portion of your paper that's going to be the bottom of your gift bag. So I'm turning my paper this way. 
and I'm going to score half inch right there. That's why I recommend making a template and marking it before you go ahead and do this with your, your good paper, so to speak. That way, if you mess up, you don't get mad. Okay, so now I have it laid out just like my template here. Half inch score lines at the bottom, and I've got all my other score lines there. I'm going to cut up to that half inch score line from here to those two marks there, okay? And I'm gonna snip those away. Next, I'm going to cut in between the five and six inch score lines down here at the bottom up to that half inch score line. I hope this is making sense with that template there. And then the next part I'm gonna cut away is between the 10 inch and the 11 inch line up to the horizontal half inch score line. Okay, now I also like to mark where I should put my adhesive and I'm gonna use tear and tape for this. You could also use stamp and seal plus. Both of those are equally strong to keep this together and to keep it from falling apart. I'm going to put adhesive on these two bottom flaps here and I'm going to put them on the two leftmost scored flaps just like my diagram says and it's go they're going the adhesive is going to go on the front of our designer series paper that is the pattern that we want to be seeing when we open up the card and believe me when I do these things they're not like easy as pie and ABC for me to do them the first time I mean I mess up and that's why I learned to make a template because I have to really think about things like a lot when I make these this doesn't come naturally to me I'm just a girl that just has fun doing this and figuring it out so <laughs> I'm right there with you some people are geniuses at it like the person that thought of this and I don't know who it was they're a genius okay so now what we want to do is take the adhesive off these two flaps Oh, sorry, we're gonna score on the score lines here. I mean, not score, fold. It's always easier to do that before you remove the liner tape, especially with tear and tape, because once that stuff sticks to paper, it's not coming off. And you don't wanna tear your paper here. Okay, so I'm going to take that stuff off, the liner. Okay, and we're going to fold our box together. All right, so I find it easy to do it this way. And then it will match up exactly. So just fold it together like a, oh, I got a little bit off there. You can see that, it's okay. All right, now what we're going to do is take the liner off of these two bottom flaps. Well, just do one at a time. So we do the first one, okay? Bring your card in. So this is the part that has the adhesive that I just took the tape off of. And we are going to do this so that you can see this. I'm gonna take that flap that has the adhesive on it and I'm gonna put it right along to the left of my card middle, just like that, okay? So this is the score line, the middle of the card. I just adhered it right to immediately to the left of it. Now take the liner tape off the other side and there's score lines on either side of these here. Tuck them in like this, just push them in so that it folds like a bag. And now close your card. And then when you open it back up, you have the bag. Pretty clever, huh? Now I want to put some handles on it. So this was actually going to be <laughs> the handles for my bag. But you know what? I don't have enough. So I'm going to have to improvise and do something else. I'll have to do another piece of ribbon because I didn't realize when I was making this that um, I don't actually have enough ribbon for that. I'll have to come up with something that's, um, hmm. I don't know. What about this embroidered ribbon? 
kind of a rustic touch. I do have gold cord, but the thing with that is I think it's going to pull through the holes too easily. So I don't think that would be a good choice. Um, all right, we're going to try it with this embroidered thread. So I have a standard hole punch here. And because I want the holes even, I'm going to pinch these two shut. And I'm going to punch on one side and then I'll punch on the other. And that'll give me a place for me to put my ribbon through. Now you can use tear and tape to hold this to the inside, but I have to admit, I couldn't quite figure out how to do that without the bag sticking together. So I just loosely knotted mine and I'm pulling it through the bag like this. And I'm gonna trim those really close. And then I'll cut another piece to go through the other side. So these are gonna be our handles. The one thing I'm missing this year is there are no turkey trot races. I just got back into running again. I've been injured for years and years and years. And, well, a couple years. <laughs> I was being a little dramatic there, wasn't I? Well, I've been running for 30 years. So when I got injured, that was my first injury in 30 years of running. I mean, and when I say injured, I mean it was like I couldn't run at all. And so after a couple years, I finally was like, okay, I think I can run now. And I was so excited to be in a turkey trot race this year and new. So, I don't know. Okay, I want to try and get it a little bit as even as I can. Whoop. Pull it through. And you can make your handles as long or as short as you want because, you know, no one's actually going to carry this bag. It's just for looks. They're more interested in what you have in there. All right, I'm gonna kinda put those two together to see if I can get them approximately the same. All right, so about there. I don't get too concerned about stuff being super precise when I'm crafting, just because it frustrates me. It kinda takes the fun out of it, and just a little bit more. But I don't want it to be totally wonky. All right, we got it. Okay, whoop, it goes like this. And so then when you close it, you can tie it shut like this. And that way it hides the surprise from the person that you're giving it to. Like I said, these ribbons get a little bit less pliable when you color them with stamp and blends, but you can still tie them. So that's the thank you card. This is the Christmas card version of it. I think this would look really pretty with poinsettia place designer series paper and I have a ton of it. So I'm thinking I might do that if I give any gift cards this Christmas. So, but I definitely have the recipient in mind for that one, like I said. So give this a try. Um, I will put the measurements for making that gift bag on the inside. I'll put them in the description to this video because I know there were a lot of numbers there. And of course there will be no live next Thursday because it's Thanksgiving. So, and, but don't forget about that sale on Tuesday, um, 10% off. It's only on Tuesday, the 24th, and it's just about everything in the annual catalog. There are some things that are excluded. We're going to get a li little bit of, um, a short list of that. And I will post that. So, um, but otherwise, guys, have a really happy Thanksgiving and thanks for watching today. Bye.